Breaking now, the southeast hit by a wild storm. Cyclonic winds tear roofs apart. Cars crushed. Heavy rain after a day of sweltering heat. Stephen Miles sworn in as Premier. He's pitched to Queenslanders on health, housing, youth crime and the Olympics. How a Seven News cameraman helped save a burning home. Remarkable video. A star-studded opera house send-off for comedy legend Barry Humphreys. And the Queensland Christmas ham voted the best by top chefs. Where to find it? Live from Brisbane, Seven News with Katrina Blowers. Good evening. We go straight to breaking news. Wild storms have wreaked havoc across parts of the southeast, with wind gusts of almost 170 kilometres an hour recorded on Brisbane's south side. Tonight, thousands of homes and businesses are without power, and there are widespread reports of damage. Swift storms sweeping the southeast. This was the scene at Archerfield. Roads were flooded, traffic lights were out, roofs torn apart. That's gnarly. After a wind gust normally seen in a Category 3 cyclone was recorded at 4.30pm. Across the southeast, a trail of destruction. A fallen tree smashing cars at Forest Lake this afternoon. Residents working with firefighters to try and clear the mess. In Springfield, hailed peppered homes and Christmas decorations went flying at Orion. In Hamilton, tables and chairs became airborne. At Augustine Heights, a roundabout blocked by a felled tree forced drivers to mount the footpath as the Gold Coast copped a drenching. The sun spent the morning in hiding. It made itself felt across a sweltering southeast. Horrible, horrible. Yeah, not really good to be honest. Been going for swims. Yeah, just trying to get out of that heat wave. In Ipswich, the mercury had soared to almost 30 degrees by 8 a.m. I had a power back out where I live. No bank plane, no, no power, no air conditioning, no nothing. Locals found relief in the water. We're going for a cold shower after this and maybe. Uh, do a bit of Christmas shopping in the aircon. Swimming lessons and then just Nanny and Poppy's pool. Forecasters say the weekend will bring more of the same. Ipswich and further west out towards Gatton. We could see temperatures you know, into the high 30s, 36, 37 uh, during today and Saturday as well. A trough bringing humidity and thunderstorms. A top of 32 degrees. You know, it's going to feel like probably 35, even 36, just with all that moisture around. It's actually very humid. Um, it's quite dry where we come from. In the waves, a chilly 21 degrees on the Gold Coast. It's a bit cooler than I thought. If the sun was there, it'd be, um, yeah, very unpleasant, I would think. And we're being reminded the heat could turn dangerous. Drink lots of water, stay at home if you can. And ride out the weather. Rosanna King Sun, 7 News. Jordan Bissell is in Corinda and Jordan, those wind gusts have caused some damage there. Katrina, they certainly have, and they've picked up again just in the last few minutes, along with heavy rain here in Corinda. Now, you can see behind me where part of a corrugated iron roof has been ripped off of the house and become airborne. The other half actually flew across the road, narrowly missing power poles, and into the side of a house where two little girls were in their bedroom. Now, they weren't hurt, neither was anyone else in the house, but it certainly is a testament to the awesome power of Mother Nature. And as we've just heard from forecasters, Katrina, there could be more on the way over the coming days. All right, we'll wait and see. Thank you, Jordan Bissell. We'll bring in Laura Dimmick now. And Laura, what caused these storms? Well, the heat is partly to blame, Katrina. Hot air and humidity creating instability, leading to waves of storms rolling through the southeast earlier than expected this afternoon. The cell that passed over the eastern suburbs with such ferocity has moved offshore. There is still plenty of activity on the radar, though, including another cell which just moved through Ipswich on its way to Brisbane. And a thunderstorm which passed over Boona heading towards the airport and Nudgee soon. More action to come tonight and more storms are forecast over the weekend. Katrina. Thanks, Laura. Stephen Miles has been sworn in as Queensland's 40th Premier following a unanimous Labor Party room vote. The former Deputy Premier is promising a new chapter as the government's front bench undergoes its biggest shake-up in almost a decade. Waving in a new era. A united front for Premier Stephen Miles and his new right-hand man. 
Given a long-standing ovation and the hugs kept coming. I don't have time to hug you all, but... <laughs> Embraced by Labor colleagues to lead the party he joined when he was still in high school. Elected unopposed and unanimously by the party room. My focus as Premier is 100% on being the Premier. We have a great opportunity to build on the legacy of Anastasia Palaszczuk. From Parliament House, history beckoned, leaving 1 William Street in the CBD in a low-key convoy, taking the 15-minute drive to 168 Fernberg Road, Paddington. Through the gates of Government House, the boy from Brisbane had arrived. Thank you. Good day. Good to see you. Making the journey with him his biggest supporters, his wife Kim and their three children, Sam, Aidan and Bridie. For the Governor of Queensland, Jeanette Young, it also marked a milestone. It's the first time she's had a Premier to officially swear in since taking on the role. God, the, <laughs> <laughs> the 46-year-old Queensland's 40th Premier. The first of his family to go to university on a scholarship from Wayne Goss. He studied journalism and politics, completing a PhD on trade union renewal. Now his sight sets on renewing a third term government. For the first time in almost nine years, there's a new leader on the steps of Government House. Stephen Miles insists he'll be a Premier who listens as he faces pressure to refocus the government ahead of the election. With a re-election slogan ready to go... Well, this is a fresh government with a fresh approach. And a team of fresh ministers. Five new ministers, the most number of fresh faces in a government since we were elected. Pine Rivers MP Nikki Boyd, Bundamba MP Lance McCallum entering the front bench from the left. From the right faction, Jordan MP Sharice Mullen, Aspley MP Bart Malish and Cairns MP Michael Healy. Replacing four outgoing MPs, including the former Premier and Transport Minister Mark Bailey. We wanted to have fresh faces. To do that, some people needed to stand aside. This afternoon, outlining a new chapter for Queensland, the conservationist and former environment minister declaring an ambitious climate target. We will reduce Queensland's emissions by 75% by 2035. Also committing to more satellite hospitals, bringing back a leadership forum to unite businesses with a call to arms to tackle youth crime. I can't fix the youth crime problem on my own. Ending on a promise to his family. Aidan and Sam and Bridie, I promise to still try to get to some of your soccer and cricket games. I hope I can make you proud. And for the rest of Queensland. I hope I can leave Queensland an even better place. with an enormous job ahead. Well, he's already set a cracking pace this week and tomorrow Stephen Miles is expected to start one-on-one -on -one meetings with his ministers. He'll then finalise and announce their roles in Cabinet on Monday. They will be under pressure to perform. Poll after poll has been indicating Labor is headed for defeat next October. A big job ahead. Thank you, Marlena. Well, housing, youth crime, the cost of living and health are Queensland's hot button issues. But the new Premier came in strongest on the environment. Conservationists were overwhelmed with relief at his promise to double the state's emissions reduction target. Inside the Tower of Power, there's a new race to the top advocacy groups wanting to be heard. We would love to have a meeting as soon as possible. The new look government is about to tackle old issues plaguing Queensland. The health crisis promising more satellite hospitals. We need more funding, so more money, but we also need more healthcare workers. Cost of living. The Premier asking to meet with supermarkets about why farmers are being paid less and shoppers are paying more. The pressures that are around the kitchen table are at the same pressures that are around the business table. They are seeing record high operating costs. Housing. Confirming a plan for 900,000 homes in the southeast. Today we haven't seen an announcement that would uh, set uh, a plan to end the housing crisis and the cost of living crisis. Or end the youth crime crisis, asking for help. My government will develop local solutions by working with local communities. The problem the Premier says he can tackle alone, Queensland's emissions target. Just incredible relief 
finally we have a government that is taking this seriously. Changing the goalposts from a 30% reduction on 2005 levels to 75% by 2035. It puts Queensland on par with New South Wales, with the country's second highest target behind Victoria. It's going to be a lot of work and we need bold action, but you don't get there if you don't set a strong target. Today I start delivering as Premier. But before fresh faces begin the work, they face fresh calls to reveal the backroom deals that got them here. Who has agreed to what in the union Game of Thrones? Queenslanders are uncomfortable with the fact that a Premier was bullied out of office. Asked if he'll be a puppet for union power broker Gary Bullock. I've had many mentors in my life and uh, Gary is one of them. I'm proud to be a member of two trade unions. The redesigned Labor government has until October to convince voters they're the right fit for Queensland. And 10 months out, it's already starting to sound like an election campaign. I'm from the suburbs, but I'll be a Premier that unites the city and the bush. The battle lines for the future of Queensland are clear. And it's war on the big issues from both sides. Michelle Jensen, That's 7 true. News. The threat of flash flooding and heavy rain remains across parts of the far north tonight as ex-tropical cyclone Jasper moves west. As power is slowly restored, residents have begun cleaning up and assessing the damage. At Trinity Beach, a trail of destruction. This is where the twister came through. A brief but powerful system. Straight through that oh, snapped over. Sweeping through Blue Water Marina like a mini tornado, snapping trees, ripping up walkways, pushing around pontoons and boats. The debris, which swirled above, came crashing down onto homes. Ryan and Karen Moody's moored vessel broke free and ran into another. Ripped the cleats out and look on this boat. That's where she hit. Now, like others, they're assessing the damage. This business, one of four broken into by a heartless looter. And he smashed the window, which we've seen, and then he smashed our neighbours and the other shop, the kebab shop. Across the far north, streets and beaches are slowly being cleared. And power is being restored. Residents pitching in using heavy machinery to remove trees and debris. A lot of stuff is falling onto houses and we've had great success in, in removing them without, thankfully, damaging um, the owner's property. This tree fallen onto this Port Douglas rooftop is one of around 900 calls for help the SES has received during Cyclone Jasper. Across the far north region, around 30 buildings have sustained minor to moderate damage. But the water is still causing problems and cutting off some communities. Everyone else is OK, so it's yeah. the main thing. Yesterday, Kevin's backyard was under. Flooding has receded, but he's not out of danger. It's still pretty busy out there. Still raining in the hills, I guess. Warnings are still in place for the Mossman and Daintree rivers, which are overflowing. This normally doesn't flow at all like this. At Barron Falls, the water is raging delighting local wildlife. So while the clean-up in the far north begins, so too do the pleas from tourism operators for visitors to return. The local tourism body says Cyclone Jasper has cost them $2 million a day in revenue from cancelled bookings and holiday plans ruined. One tourism operator has told 7 News they alone lost half a million dollars over this period. It's a blow to businesses that would normally be enjoying a busy school holiday time, so the message is come and enjoy the region. Sally Guyte there. Coal-fired power stations are closing faster than expected, prompting new fears of blackouts over the Christmas holidays. The latest warning coming from the market operator as households prepare for one of the hottest summers on record. The pace of the energy transition is generating real heat. Australia's coal-fired power stations are closing down. Faster than expected, 10 have closed since 2012. 90% will have shut by 2035 and all by 2038. Many more renewables will be needed sooner and transmission lines to connect them to the grid. We're probably OK for summer so long as there's not a big problem. A challenge to triple renewable energy production by 2030 and lay out 10,000 
1,000 kilometres of transmission lines, costing $16 billion, but the Australian energy market operator says delivering consumers $17 billion in benefits. That means that if we don't deliver those transmission projects, consumers will have to pay $17 billion more. We're talking really big projects that, use, that take lots and lots of years and we're already behind on them. The government says we're not, claiming it will meet all its targets, including 82% of electricity from renewable sources by 2030. The key is a faster, more orderly rollout of renewable energy, plus continuing to roll out the necessary storage and transmission. The opposition sees it differently. This is a dire warning for business and for households and for the Australian economy as a whole. Insisting coal should be replaced by nuclear energy, not according to the market operator. The lowest cost replacement for that energy is renewable energy. Renewing an old debate. Mark Riley, 7 News. King Charles has led tributes to Australian entertainment legend Barry Humphreys at a star-studded state memorial in Sydney. The 89-year-old, remembered as a cultural icon, a genius and simply pure comedy magic. For a man who embodied multiple characters, it was hard to imagine one memorial was ever going to be enough. It was. Hello, possums. Yes, it's me, Dame Edna, and aren't I looking gorgeous? The Sydney Opera House, the perfect setting for a man who called the stage home. when the petals fly and... Lovable, lively, legendary, a larrikin lost. Valet Barry Humphreys. After his death in April, his memorial service was filled with memories, tears and tributes from famous friends. Celebrate with laughter because that was what Barry was all about. Even a royal message from King Charles delivered by Arts Minister Tony Burke. Those who wondered whether Australia's housewife superstar might this time just go too far were always proved right. From his family, Barry was just dad. If you have a parent who's an artist, you sort of share, share that parent with their fans. But no memorial would be complete without a performance from the Mooney Pond housewife herself. Why do I love Australia? Guests today walking the pink carpet, a fitting tribute for one of his most famous alter egos. The sides of the guest list matching that of a man who was truly larger than life. From entertainment alumni... She'd be so annoyed that she couldn't be here throwing gladioli at us all. Well, I think Dame Edna would be thrilled. Barry might be a little. Oh. Politicians... He was entertaining, intelligent, innovative and all of those things. And, of course, his fans. One simply couldn't let Dame Edna miss this show. Nobody as great as Edna. Nobody comes close. And with the Opera House sales set to be lit up from 8.30 tonight, this was a farewell fit for a legend. Taylor Aiken, 7 News. In the right place at the right time. Coming up, see the moment a 7 News cameraman helps save a burning home. A major traffic blitz on the inner city bypass. An angry mum's ultimatum for a Christmas parcel thief and an epic milestone for SeaWorld's polar bear twins. On 7 News, Christmas hams put to the test. Top chefs unwrap the marketing spin to rule on what's best for texture, taste, value. The best ham in Australia. Plus, their tips on how to make hams last longer in the fridge. 7 News, coming up. Welcome back. Hundreds of Brisbane drivers have been breath tested in a major road safety blitz on the inner city bypass. Ten people were caught drink driving and another five had drugs in their system, including one Milton man who was also charged with possessing a pipe and knuckle dusters. Queensland police are warning they'll be out in full force these holidays. We have some extraordinary video tonight of the moment a Seven News cameraman helped save a burning home. He and a tow truck driver burst through the door with cameras rolling the entire time. Racing towards the smoke. That's the kitchen. A towie leaps over the fence, a Seven News cameraman not far behind. 
They barrel towards the back door and break it down. You all right? Fumes, fumes. We made the decision to, um, sorry to the owners, but break into your house and check if you were there. Cameraman Brendan West, also a Rural Fire volunteer, arms himself with a garden hose. He's faced with a wall of flames. Yep, go, go. Go, 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 go. I've knocked this out. Come, go in, go in. Go in. Out. Out. Watch that door. With that, the fire eases until... It's in the roof. When the fire is getting here, tell them it's in the roof. The kitchen is charred, there's ceiling damage, but the Sunshine Coast house was saved. First instinct this time round was to grab the camera, but once I saw Dane kicking in the door, um, training and instincts just kicked in. If no one else had called it in, the house would have been well involved upon our arrival. The homeowners are relieved, grateful. If you guys hadn't come along, we wouldn't have, it would have been far worse, so thank you. Two towies and a TV cameraman in the right place at the right time. Alexandra Cullen, 7 News. The US Congress has passed legislation allowing the AUKUS deal to go ahead. At least three nuclear submarines will be sold to Australia from early next decade. The Defence Minister says the Virginia-class submarines are important to the nation's defence strategy with the United States and United Kingdom. These are the most complex machines that humanity have ever built. US President Joe Biden will now sign the bill, making it law. The Prince of Wales has attended a passing out parade at the Royal Navy's Officer Training College in the UK. Prince William met the new naval cadets who've just graduated and in a speech he made mention of his late grandmother, saying the college holds a special place in his heart because it's where she first laid eyes on Prince Philip. Year 12 ATAR results are in. How Queensland schools performed, that's next. An explosive text revealed as Lisa Wilkinson takes the stand again at the Bruce Lehrman trial. Australia's best chefs put Christmas hams to the test. And Dreamworld's new high-flying ride now open. Are there more to come? An alleged thief has been charged over a break-in at a Gold Coast home. Video shows the 21-year-old and his friends returning hours later where they were confronted by a resident who tried to snatch the stolen car's keys, but they reversed, dragging the man down the road. Luckily, he managed to escape before the car took off. Thomas Grundy will remain behind bars until his next court appearance in the new year. TV presenter Lisa Wilkinson has faced a grilling over texts and videos, uh, photos rather, during a second day in the witness box in the Bruce Lehrman defamation case. The Wilkinson text accused Senator Linda Reynolds of lying through her teeth. How high are the stakes? Returning to the witness box, Lisa Wilkinson taken back to Brittany Higgins' bruise photo. After saying she didn't think to check its metadata because she didn't know what that was, today shown a 2015 tweet where she mentions metadata. You describe yourself as a serious investigative journalist. I describe myself as a journalist. It was most improbable that you did not know what metadata was. I disagree. Saying she didn't know photos had metadata. Wilkinson and conceded some of Brittany Higgins' version of what then Minister Linda Reynolds had told her was likely affected by what she'd been through. We excluded things that we felt were possibly coloured by her trauma. Wilkinson messaged her producer Reynolds was, quote, lying through her teeth after telling Question Time she would not have met Higgins in her office if she'd known the details of the alleged incident. I believe Senator Reynolds misled Parliament in saying that. Questioned about the project not including part of Higgins' answer about about the alleged rape's aftermath, the viewer wasn't told a security guard had asked, one, how she was, and two, she had replied she was fine. That's very poor journalism, isn't it, to conceal that? I'm disappointed to see that. It is a detail that escaped my attention. Wilkinson says Bruce Lehrman was given 80 hours to respond before the program went to air, which she called fair and reasonable. She was even preparing questions in case Mr Lehrman agreed to be interviewed. Though not named, Lehrman argues he could be 
identified by details about where he had worked. I knew that the Channel 10 legal department were across this story and I trusted that it was appropriate for those details to be in there. This afternoon, finishing her evidence... Do you still trust the Channel 10 legal department? As the trial continues, Paul Kadak, 7 News. Vladimir Putin is promising no peace in Ukraine until Russia has achieved its goals. The president made the comments during a four-hour press conference with Western media, his first since launching the invasion. They get freebies all the time, but those freebies will end someday. Little by little, this is coming to an end. It comes as the European Union agreed to open membership negotiations with Ukraine. Tens of thousands of school leavers have marked their last big high school milestone, receiving their ATAR results this morning. It was extra special for 34 bright students who achieved a perfect score. They got through COVID, high school, and now the big results reveal. I couldn't actually bring myself to open them. I was so nervous. Many school leavers opened their subject scores late last night before checking their ATAR this morning. 98.85, which I'm really happy with. I was online with a few friends, so we shared our results. It doesn't feel real at all. In 2023, more than 27,000 Queensland students achieved an ATAR, while 510 got a perfect score in at least one subject. Congratulations, Celeste. Here are your subject results from 2023. Oh, my God! <laughs> Australia's Young Historian of the Year, making the top grade in English and ancient history. I think I've always been more inclined to the humanities and I've always been better at writing than I have at math. The highest ATAR one can score is 99.95. This year in Queensland, 34 students achieved that result, including here at St Aidan's. It was always kind of a goal, but it's a bit surreal. I'm so, so happy with what I got. And even if you aren't... Do not feel stressed or anxious. There are simply so many roads to roam. So whether you have a clear path to the future... I'm hoping to do medicine next year. ..or are still working it out... I think I'm going to take a gap here. ..the opportunities are endless. Rosanna Kingsun, 7 News. <laughs> Good on them. Well, Dreamworld has unveiled its newest attraction, the Dreamworld Flyer, opening today. The 64-seater can reach speeds of up to 50 kilometres an hour and fans lined up to be the first to experience the attraction. It was really fun and refreshing. Loved it. Family friendly, all the kids could do it as well. Not too fast, but fantastic thrill. The park has even more rides scheduled to open next week. A frustrated mum has gone public to issue an ultimatum to a porch pirate stealing Christmas parcels. Her message is next. Young criminals busted in Moreton Bay. How top doctors are closing in on a vaccine for skin cancer. And the moment a bull wanders onto the wrong side of the tracks. Nine people have been arrested in a youth crime crackdown in the Morton region. The 11-day operation by Task Force Guardian targeted repeat offenders. Since the task force launched in May, 611 people have been arrested on nearly 2,000 charges. A first-of-its-kind vaccine is showing some promise, treating patients with the most deadly form of skin cancer. The mRNA vaccine is being developed by Moderna and has been found to prevent melanoma returning for as long as three years. The drug maker says it might consider applying to regulators for conditional approval. A Melbourne mum is playing tit for tat on TikTok with an alleged parcel pincher. He's accused of stealing Christmas packages from her front door, so she gave him a 24-hour ultimatum before calling police. Two weeks before Christmas, a Grinch caught on camera, stealing gifts from the front of a home in Melbourne's west, holding them close to his chest. A quick getaway stalled by a space too small. Instead, he used the back seat to complete the feat. I was so angry. Like, I know I'm smiling now, but in that moment, I was so... I was fuming. Mum of three, Jasmine Jung, left them there on Wednesday. Five parcels, Christmas gifts for friends, to be collected by a courier. 
So I thought, what can I do to actually increase my chance of getting it back? And like, it might sound stupid, but I just thought, well, I've seen TikTok do some pretty crazy things. I haven't even filed a police report yet because I'm giving you 24 hours to return these parcels. The 27-year-old's TikTok video exposing him and delivering an ultimatum exploded. More than 2 million views within a day. All that hard work for you to come and steal them off my front door when the postman was collecting them and then he couldn't collect them. Guess why? Because you stole them. I didn't want to ruin his life if it was just a snap of the moment decision. I wanted to give him a chance to do the right thing, make it right. A worker from a nearby McDonald's told her he was there minutes earlier. He was just apparently causing a ruckus, like disrupting diners. True to her word, 24 hours since posting the video, Jasmine Young came to her local police station to report the theft because despite millions of views, her parcels weren't returned. It's just a shortcut to steal from others, right? Like everyone needs to work hard to get what they have. Paul Dowsley, 7 News. There was chaos on New Jersey's rail network when a young bull escaped, wandered into a station and began running up and down the tracks. Police officers were bullish in response, trapping the creature inside a fenced lot before animal control arrived and carted him away. Have you bought your Christmas presents but don't feel like wrapping them? Well, we have a solution. Indra Pilly Shopping Centre has set up a gift wrapping station. For a minimum donation of $2 per gift, you can avoid the hassle. And all the money raised will go to the Children's Hospital Foundation. The station is open until Christmas Eve. And on Wednesday, some seven news faces, I think I've been roped into this, will be there to help out. Can't guarantee the wrapping will be that fabulous if I do it. Well, top Aussie chefs have given their verdict on the best hams just on in time years. for Christmas. Christmas. Where to find the winner right here in Queensland? That story is just ahead on 7 News. Time for sport now, though, and here's Alyssa. And a hometown hero has been hamming it up in Perth. Ha <laughs> ha, ching you love that one. <laughs> uh, Mitch Marsh, Katrina, hello, everyone. Just ahead, it did a smashing start and turn into a century. Plus, Phil Kern says what we're all thinking after Eddie Jones's defection to Japan. Mitch Marsh has been denied a fairy tale test homecoming against Pakistan in Perth. The Aussie all rounder fell in the nervous 90s, unable to match David Warner's century, while Pakistan has mounted some resistance with the ball and bat late on day two. Limbering up for a long day ahead. Warm ups happening not just for the players but for security as well. Mitch Marsh feeling loose from the get go. Big strong man gives that the treatment. In a festive mood, dishing out punishment, not presents to Pakistan. Oh, and starting to walk down the wicket to Ashraf now as well. And that's 50 for Mitch Marsh on his home turf. His first test in Perth for six years. What is that? Plastered. Amir Jamal on debut, knocking over Alex Carey and Mitchell Stark. Oh, got him this time. No doubt about that one. Marsh needed some mates to stick around and not run him out. Marsh in trouble. He survives the shot missed. David Warner not worried. Feet up, lean back and just enjoy the show. Well, the bowler got a boot to it. But not enough to stop it from going to the boundary. Into the nervous 90s, first ball after lunch, Mitch sent marching back to the pavilion. How to take all the air out of a stadium full of anticipation. Tail cleaned up cheaply, Jamal six of them, all out for 487 when a score of 500 plus beckoned. Nathan Lyon four wickets away from 500. Oh, just wide of slip and down to the boundary. No chance of getting a glove on this one. Well, that's one way to take on a world-class spinner. Shafiq on the counter-attack, the tourists digging in. Brett Thomas, 7 News. Rugby legend Phil Kearns has labelled Eddie Jones a liar, but believes his Wallabies walkout is a blessing. Officially unveiled as Japan's new coach, Jones claims he's still haunted by his ugly defection from Australia, but denies he hoodwinked fans. Eddie Jones jumping ship to coach Japan, riding out on Australia. I apologise to Australian fans. Yeah, mate, I gave everything I could for that short period of time and it wasn't good enough. But I don't feel any guilt at all about this process. Plenty think he's guilty. Deception, lying, duplicity, he's 
uh, deceive the Australian rugby public um, through and through. Right now is the time that we need to tough it out, not leave and go to another country. Disappointed at Jones's defection after the World Cup debacle, Phil Kearns believes it will be a blessing. If that's going to be the attitude that you take into coaching the Wallabies and the history of the Wallabies, um, then then you don't want that that ethos brought into our our team. I feel terrible about what I, the results of Australia because I wanted to go back and, and change Australia. Jones still denies he interviewed with Japan before the World Cup, claiming they only spoke once last week. I was asked by the recruitment agency to share my experiences with, with them on Japan, and some people might have construed that as an interview. Rugby Australia urged to take longer than that to find his replacement. This decision is a massive one for Australian rugby, which they need, need to get right. James Manton, 7 News. Titans winger Lofiana Camperera reveals he's not too popular with new coach Des Hasler. At the Gold Coast annual NADOC Festival, the 22-year-old concedes he's got some learning to do under the mad professor. He sprayed a couple of boys and he's given me a spray the other day, which I didn't, didn't really like, take good, I guess. But um, nah, yeah, he's all, he's all good. He just wants you to be better. Across the border, Sea Eagles' Tom Trebojevic is back to full contact training after recovering from a torn pec. He's adamant he won't be switching from full back to the centres to reduce the risk of injury. I think I hurt myself in the centres, so, um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know uh, about that one, but uh, look, people are entitled to their opinions. They can, they can say what they want. He's confident he'll be ready for round one. With the pay dispute settled, the Super Netball signing frenzy has begun. The Firebirds slooping on two key players for 2024. Vice-captain Lara Dunkley is staying put for a further two years, remaining in Brisbane with her two brothers. Tipper Dwan, the partner of Lions star Josh Dunkley, is returning home after two seasons with the reigning premiers, the Thunderbirds. I know, I was joking about it yesterday with him, so hopefully the Lions can do one better and we can get two Queensland teams in the granny. And Diamonds captain Liz Watson will suit up for the Lightning. After finishing up in the Ballon d'Or, Sam Kerr was once again snubbed for football's top prizes. The Matilda skipper wasn't included in the final three shortlist for FIFA's Best Women's Player Award. World Cup winners Ada Bonmati and Jenny Hermosa, Hermoso rather, were named. Kerr's World Cup semi-final super strike also didn't make cut for goal of the year. Down a record 42 to 0 at halftime to the Las Vegas Raiders. The calls came thick and fast for the Los Angeles Chargers to axe coach Brandon Stanley in the NFL. They should fire him for they should make history. They should fire him at halftime. <laughs> they should just, hey, we got an Uber X carpool outside and we'll we'll send you on your way. The Chargers improved slightly after the break, losing 63 to 21. What a score that is sport. Thank you, Alyssa. Checking finance now, and it was a strong day on the Australian share market. The ASX 200 gaining 64 points to finish on a four and a half month high. Zipco was the biggest winner of the day, up almost 18%. Mining stocks also helped the gains. BHP was up more than 2%. The Aussie dollar is buying 67 US cents and a dollar eight New Zealand. SeaWorld's polar bear twins celebrated a milestone today, turning 20 years old. Hudson and Nelson enjoyed a special birthday breakfast with sardine wrapped presents, big pieces of fish, and their favourite sweet treat, watermelon. They've had a wonderful life, you know, they've, they've parented and done all those types of things, hit all those milestones. The twins arrived at SeaWorld as 11 month old cubs. Now to the next entry in the Kissmas Lights People's Choice competition. The display at Six Rise Place Heathwood gets bigger every year. This year there's 29,000 lights giving the house a festive glow. Jamie Van's been setting up his canopy of lights for months, zip tying each bulb individually after the kids go to bed. To vote for your favourite, visit kiss973.com.au for your chance to also win $500. And just in time for Christmas, top chefs have given their verdict on the best festive hams. Where you can find them, that's up next. Rain has helped cool things down slightly on the Gold Coast. 23 degrees there now. It will be a hot and stormy weekend. Details next.
This year's Christmas hams have been put to the test by some of Australia's top chefs. A butcher from Cairns came out on top for their festive favourite. Christmas has come early for staff at Tobaldi Small Goods. It's festive ham a winner at this year's Australian Meat Industries Charcuterie Excellence Awards. So we do know that our hams are the best. They taste um, delicious. They're actually all made from 100% Australian pork. Tobaldi won gold for its ham both on and off the bone. It's Christmas hams retailing for just $8.50 a kilo. Half ham on the bone, that's usually about your $50 mark. Judges included celebrity chefs Colin Fassenage and Adrian Richardson, who sampled hundreds of entries, assessing aroma and taste, texture, smokiness and flavour. Standards in Australia are getting higher every year. The Christmas ham category champion is a small butcher from Cairns in far north Queensland, who beat all the big guys. Well, this recipe is really unique and it's been in the family for over 40 years. Despite tough economic times, our ham-loving nation spends $100 million a year on the festive staples. Tobaldi winning silver for its boneless leg ham, which small families can enjoy for $12 a pack. The 90-year-old company is one of the big four ham producers in the country, this year making a record 200 tonnes of ham in time for Christmas. It's that big ham that sits in the middle with the cloves in it, the glaze on the outside, that's what I'm waiting for. The CSIRO says Christmas ham can last up to two weeks in the fridge. Jackie Quist, 7 News. Never lasts that long. Now let's get a slice of the weather with Laurie Dimmick. Well, Katrina, we have all been roasting in recent days. The humidity is so high you can actually see it. Droplets combining with smoke to put a haze over the city today. Let's check the radar quickly. Pockets of storms are sweeping through in a northeasterly direction with warnings current for most of the southeast. Hail, strong winds and heavy rain have all been reported. It dipped to just below 25 in the city overnight. That's our warmest morning since 2020. Thick cloud really helping to trap the heat in. Oki, Toowoomba and Dolby had their warmest December day since 2020. At the moment, XTC Jasper is in the middle of the peninsula moving very slowly, which allows more time to drop a significant amount of rain across the far north. The system should reach the Gulf tomorrow and then it may reform into a tropical cyclone. Elsewhere, a trough could trigger storms over the state's south on the weekend. Around the country, a hot day ahead in Sydney, 35 there, and hot too in Perth for the third day of the test. Heavy rain will continue over the peninsula and north tropical coast tomorrow, easing back slightly in Cairns. There's still a major flood warning for the Daintree River. Partly cloudy along the Capricorn coast, showers and a possible storm south of Meribra. Inland Longreach could see a storm as well. Temperatures are four to six degrees above average in these heatwave conditions in the southeast. Today, storms didn't push too far north, but tomorrow the watch area includes the Sunshine Coast. The storms could again be severe and are set to form from early afternoon. Afternoon. On the bay tomorrow, northwesterly is up to 20 knots with gusts of 25 knots late in the day. It might be worth having an indoor activity for the kids in Brisbane tomorrow. Showers, then storms are a good chance after lunch. A slightly cooler top of 32, but 23 tonight. As the heat lingers, so does the possibility for storms. We could see a rumble on Sunday as well. In Ipswich, the chance of a storm carries through to Monday with temperatures slowly dipping. Skies are looking clearer on the Gold Coast for the start of the week. And the Sunshine Coast might be the place to be next week with temperatures in the low 30s. And now for a look at beach conditions. The swell has really dropped and there wasn't much on offer for experienced board riders today, even at swell magnet Duranbar. Northerly winds are forecast for the next few days with knee to waist high waves tomorrow, so the open beaches will be the only ones with something to offer. But there's never been a better time to learn with small beach breaks to practice on. If you're hoping to take a dip, there's been lots of water movement and undertow, so definitely a time to stay between the flags. The water temperature has dropped to a brisk 22 degrees. Bodies, it will be choppy at times tomorrow as the winds pick up. Sunday is looking like a slightly better day on the water if you can hold off. 
And that is all from us this Friday. Thank you for your company. We will have updates throughout the evening, but for now from all the team, have a great night.